for more on these pension problems, I want to bring in a former chairman of the Texas Pension Review Board, where he oversaw the entire Texas public retirement system, including dozens of state and local funds. He is Frederick Rowe, Shad Rowe, as he's known, uh, chair of Greenbrier Inve uh, Partners Fund, and also John Ehrlichman joining me, who has been following uh, the state of the states that we have been uh, talking about. And Shad, uh, great for you to stop by. And I know that you've been critical of these pension funds and how they've been, quote unquote, going to Las Vegas uh, tr to try to get these returns. Uh, Texas itself, though, has a it's in not bad shape. I think its pension fund is 84 um, percent. A pension fund system is 84 percent funded. Funded, yeah. Uh, but there's still problems. Specifically, what do you want to see the Texas pension fund system do in order to make up that gap? How do we specifically solve that problem? Well, the, the problem in pensions is the same problem that we have elsewhere, which is that we've asked people to be responsible for our money, and they've made bets that they would never make with their own money. And whether it's a corporate director or whether it's a trustee of a fund or a member of a board, what is the standard that they should operate under? You know, New Jersey and, and Illinois, it didn't like this happened overnight. It's been going but, on but, a long but, but time. But that's, that's a product of the fact that they have a rate of return of eight percent or so. Right. Right. So, but that's not. But that's not a direct. But the issue, though, is they've got this. They've got two problems. They've got the problems of a high return that they need to meet. But then they have a problem of they don't have enough contributions coming in. So then they've got this widening gap. So what do you do? What do you advise them to do? Well, they're they're just between a rock and a hard place. It's like any other workout. Somebody has to pay it. Either the people who are promised the benefits have to accept less, or the taxpayers have to pay more. So is that a workout? What does the law say? It'll vary with states, but it's a, it's a big problem that's been a long time developing, and, uh, and the numbers are staggering when you, when you look at them. Uh, we have in this country $15 trillion in retirement savings. Mm -hmm. And if you think that the money should compound at 8%, like everyone assumes, in 30 years that turns into $150 trillion. But if it compounds at 5%, 3% less, it turns into $60 trillion. Right. So there is a $90 trillion difference represented by a 3% change in assumptions. So, Shad, are you saying that any pension fund right now that is not guaranteeing, but essentially saying we can make 8%, we can make 8.5% annually for the next few years, they're out of their mind. They have to reevaluate and say we can try to make 5%, but we're not counting on it. Right, right. What, what would any rational person promise 30 years from now? You'd pick a return that you, was a layup, not something that you're, that you're having to, to really reach for. So, okay, so, but I keep coming back to this, though. So then, so we know that these returns can be unrealistic. Right. So then, is the answer to bring down the rate of return and have the pensioners swallow? Yeah, lower the assumption. Lower the assumption and have them swallow and, and a so bitter medicine. Contributions should be more and the promises should be lower. What do you do if your, if your overhead starts to exceed your income? You cut back. Well, this is the same thing. Now, if you have that problem personally, you don't go to Las Vegas to try to make it up. You cut your expenses and you try to get somebody to pay you more. Chad, if, pe if people don't think that they can uh, have the money to fund their pensions, they're going to start selling some of their assets faster. Right. The easiest stuff to sell are things like stocks, bonds, stuff that's Big liquid. Big liquid stock. Mm -hmm. And all these pension funds also own stuff like real estate. They own private equity. Now, assume they have to sell the liquid stuff faster. If you're a pension fund and you have more real estate and private equity comparatively to stocks and bonds two years from now, uh, what kind of return can you expect from those assets versus stocks? Because a lot of people say stocks are cheap, maybe the stock market goes up from here. Well, it, the, 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 their overhang is tremendous. And uh, so who knows? It's a completely a liquid market and you're making assumptions on what's going to happen. To pay these promises, you're going to have to sell the liquid assets, that is, the big liquid stocks, which is, in my opinion, where people ought to be. Okay. All right. Chad, we'll have to leave it there, but it's a very interesting discussion, of course, something that we were going to be following throughout. Uh, Shad Rowe, the chairman of Greenbrier Partners Fund, talking about the Texas pension fund system.